Welcome back to Get After It. In this episode, we're going to be doing one of the final few things on the interior left on our punch list, and that's installing countertops in the kitchen. What we've picked for this cabin is a butcher block countertop, so we're going to get those slabs cut to size, going to get the sink cut out, stains, and get them installed. So for the next few minutes, sit back, enjoy yourself, let's learn something together, and let's get after it. So I purchased these butcher block countertops in 48 inch lengths. You can get them in 96, which is eight foot long, or you can get them the four foot like I did. As it turns out, I'm gonna need a four foot piece as well as an 18 inch piece for the other little piece of cabinet. And these things are 25 inches deep, which is just a little bit deeper than a typical kitchen cabinet, which allows for a little bit of an overhang. So what I'm doing here is figuring out exactly where the center of my sink is as well as 15 inches off of that end for a 30 inch base cabinet and seeing that those two lines line up. This is just rough so I'm just turn it upside down, take your time, look at it, see if you're exactly as far off the wall as you want to be. Maybe you want to be a little closer to the to the edge. All that's up to you. So as you can see here I've got a little pencil nick on the butcher block itself and then I've got a little marker line there on the sink and as long as those two line up then it's just a matter of moving this thing forward and back to get off the wall the distance that I want to. Just pay particular attention that you are in the center of that cabinet give or take something uh, pretty close that way you don't run into any rubs or have to do any cutting later. The instructions here called for just simply tracing this upside down on the countertop and then coming back in 5 sixteenths of an inch on the inside of all four of those lines, drawing another line that will be cut out. And that will allow the sink to sit down in the countertop and overhang about a quarter inch on every side. look at the instructions it'll suggest that you do this with a jigsaw and that would work it's a little slow but if you feel pretty confident with a skill saw uh, particularly plunge cutting a skill saw then this is definitely the quicker option just be careful pay attention and you'll be fine blade lined up on the line you can see here how I'm pinching the fence of that saw keeps you the exact distance that you want to be away from the edge helps you get a straight line quicker I didn't want to run the risk of taking my skill saw past the line in the event that that kerf could be seen after the sink is installed and the flanges are covering that up. So I just sort of backed off the line there and then I'll use a jigsaw to cut into those corners. You could also use a hand saw or a Japanese saw as you'll see me do one of the corners here in just a minute.
you're installing an undermount sink, you can actually use this cutout portion here as a cutting board that can simply sit back down in the sink and be flush on top. Maybe just cutting out a little finger hole or a little slot there to be able to grab it. But in our case, we're doing a top mount, drop down sink. We'll simply take that slab, dress it up, treat it, sand it, etc., and our client will have a cutting board. So as I mentioned earlier, the kitchen cabinets are basically cut into two portions. Uh, we have between the refrigerator and the stove, we have a 48 inch piece that includes the sink and then we have an end cabinet that's 18 inches. And that's what this piece here is for. I need to get an 18 inch slab off of this with no openings obviously for a sink. And this will just simply cover that cabinet and we'll be done. While I'm getting this piece unwrapped and prepped and cut, I want to go ahead and take a minute to address staining and finishing these butcher block countertops. Because these are going in a kitchen, you should be using a food grade material, something approved for a butcher block countertop or a cutting board. A lot of people use mineral oil, which requires about a monthly maintenance. Really wasn't keen on that. So I actually used a product from Lowe's that was specifically a stain for butcher block countertops or cutting boards. You see here in the corner of these cabinets, the triangular pieces that are used for attaching a countertop to the cabinet itself. Just simply used, I uh, believe in my case, an inch and a quarter drywall screw screwed up into the countertop, which was more than enough to get that done. I uh, simply lost the footage here of me staining these. Uh, my apologies, I'll get better about that, but uh, nothing really to it. Just simply used the material that I mentioned from Lowe's, wiped it on with the cloth. I actually did two coats with about 15 minutes in between. One other option you can have if you want a super slick feel that'll close up the pores is to pre-sand this with maybe a 400 grit or so sandpaper on an orbital sander. So, I did that, was able to get this stained with two coats while I went to lunch, and here we are simply caulking this with a silicone base before we drop the sink in and tighten up the hardware that was sent along with it. Like most sinks, this one came with the hardware to install it. Uh, each side of this sink on the underside actually has a little piece of channel uh, and it sends some hardware, just simply insert the threaded screws or bolts if you will, it's sort of an odd piece there without really a head on it that just simply inserts into that channel and then you tighten a nut and it clamps it down. Pretty straightforward. Before I screw this one down, I want to show you those little corner pieces there with the holes to simply take a screw up through from the bottom and into the butcher block and there you have it. You can also dab some silicone and really get these things seated down, but no bigger than these pieces are. I didn't need to do that. Just simply get it centered, make sure the reveal on either side is what you need. And in my case, I had to take out the drawer and open the door and get in there and put those screws in. So as we wrap this cabin up here in the next couple of weeks, I want to remind you that we'll be starting another one immediately following. So not only will we be following this cabin to its home and documenting what it's like to build the foundation, get this home installed, but we'll also be doing some episodes and doing one of these cabins start to finish. So with that, I want to thank you for being with me. I hope you've had fun and learned something. I know I sure have.
So with that, have fun, be safe, and get after it.